Today, we're going to talk about something that I honestly love to do, but has led me to this situation, or has helped me get into the situation that I am currently in. I'm going to talk bad about Gaijin, the developers of War Thunder. A game that I have put over 3,000 hours into. 3,000 hours of my life basically wasted. Now I know a lot of my community has found me from War Thunder, and I've said this several times before, but this is the final straw. I'm done. I will no longer be playing War Thunder, and for those who only want to watch me because of my skill sets, and my ability to play War Thunder, I am sorry. I will no longer play it. I can no longer stand idle. I do not want to participate in this company's endeavors, events, whatever. I can't do it. I can no longer support them. Financially and through exposure. Now I know that I am not a huge creator and this might fall on deaf ears, but you have to understand. Every person has their breaking point, and this is too much. For those of you who don't know what War Thunder is, it's a third-person, vehicle-based shooter with strategy elements. Essentially, it's World of Tanks, but somehow better. In the sense of, it's better in gameplay, but the developers are just as scummy. Now I know that in 2022, the gaming industry has taken some steps back, whether it be through creation or other elements of pay to win, gambling, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, Gaijin, the developers of War Thunder, have somehow tapped in to everything that is bad about the gaming industry and just let it run rampant, let alone the loot box system that they have, the overwhelming amount of grind, the lack of communication to their community, their complete and utter disregard for their community. For those who don't know, Gaijin is a Russian-based company, and because of the current political situations dealing with Ukraine and Russia, there have been some actions made by Gaijin uh, in hopes to be seen in a certain light. But this is the same company that freely lets anyone type the N-word with a hard R into in-game chat with no repercussions. But if you are to call a developer a weeb, which their name, Gaijin, is Japanese-based for foreigner, you will actually get banned or see a chat restriction for three to seven days. But being blatantly racist, will lead you to no repercussions. While Gaijin does allow you to have the freedom of speech to express your support for either side through decals in the game, if you are to discuss the actual political situation uh, on either side, you may find yourself reaping some repercussions. Now, at the beginning of this conflict, they restricted chat to being ping-based only. So you can only communicate to your team through methods or situations that they deem appropriate. Now, I understand this is a situation to save face, but it still feels a little weird to me. Before we dip into the main reason for this video, let's talk about pay to win. A system that is egregious in the gaming community whether it be a skin in a battle royale or cards or players that you can purchase for a sports game that are innately better than the rest. Gaijin 
involves itself with a similar method, allowing you access to vehicles that are at a tier to fight other vehicles that innately they are better than. To give an example, while one country or player is forced to use World War II vehicles, Gaijin will allow you to play a vehicle from the Cold War or newer for a small fee. Some of these vehicles are also behind events. Events that are put on to bring the community together and have a reason to play. To bring community members back to the game. And they're for a set time period. And now this would not be a problem if the average player was able to complete the entire event within a reasonable amount of time. Now, I don't know what the timetables look in Gaijin land, but when the event is being deduced down to a, a full-time job to complete all tiers of it within a game, I think that's a problem. And that's odd that they have this mindset when it is obvious that the creators and developers do not play the game. So why would they force us to play for 40 hours a week to complete their little fun events? And it's not in a sense that if you were to play for 40 hours straight, you would complete the event. They have broken it up into two day sections to then make you forcibly play that for longer. Now, as a content creator, I do allot myself time to play a game every single day. And for a time, that was this game. But most people do not have that access. Most people have lives and things that they like to do with their free time other than grinding out a game to get a vehicle, skin, or decal that they think is kind of cool. Sometimes Gaijin is a little tricky, and they'll put a vehicle that is overpowered into the game, but put it behind an event. Here's the caveat. You can still pay real money to complete that event. About $70, I think, is usually what it goes for. $70 of real life money that you can pay so that you don't have to play the game. So you can get access to that shiny new vehicle. Which brings me to my next point. Another community building event that Gaijin likes to put on. Twitch drops. A lot of games do it. A lot of games do it successfully. Escape from Tarkov is an iconic Twitch drops game because it does bring the community together. Almost everyone who plays that game wants to get the in-game content that you get from Twitch Drops. Now, Battlestate Games, the creator of Escape from Tarkov, allows only certain individuals to play at certain times to get those Twitch Drops. But there's a nice, neat schedule. Now, some of those streamers on that list do get upwards of two to 300,000 viewers at one time. Gaijin, and War Thunder are nothing like that. The maximum I usually see is about five to six K. Small, but still very influential. In previous Twitch drop events, all you had to do was play War Thunder and stream it on your channel. That was it. Then they added a caveat that you had to have at least five or 10 viewers. Okay, that's fine. But now, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. They have added a clause to the Twitch drop that if you are not a approved content creator, you will not be getting Twitch drops on your channel. Meaning that the community I have built for five years now, playing War Thunder, they cannot receive drops on my channel while I'm playing during this event because I am not an approved creator. And how might you get on this whitelist for Gaijin? 
Well, to put it simply, do what they want you to do. They want you to give a facet of control over how you talk about their game to be on their allowed list. Now I have made it a staple to be honest about my feelings and opinions about all the games that I play on my channel and through other forms of creation. Thus, having negative opinions, I have not been allowed to join their content creator group. If this was the standard on the first Twitch drops, I would have no problem. But through the exposure they receive from Twitch drops and the community building it allows, have received partnership on Twitch or otherwise sustained growth. So what this seems like to me is that Gaijin is not allowing anyone to receive that growth, only the people they deem fit. Now, there's no guarantee you could have a thousand people watching you one day and have five people watching the next. I know that for personal experience. This gatekeeping attitude that Gaijin has developed this past year for only allowing certain individuals to communicate to their base is interesting. And on top of all the other things that they do is why I will no longer play their game. I will no longer support them. Moving forward, I hope that Gaijin gets better. A huge point that plagues this game is the inability for Gaijin to listen to their community and respond effectively. Now I'm not asking for a free Abrams, but I would like some accountability. And if anyone is watching this and has a story to share about War Thunder or Gaijin in general, please leave it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you didn't. And I'll see you guys on the next one.